Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you can join us either by Facebook Live or Zoom for our pre-service meditation. So I invite you to take this time to get still, to close your eyes, to turn your attention inward, and to use this time in meditation, Vipassana meditation, which allows us to cultivate a greater sense of mindfulness, of just an awareness of where our thoughts our feelings, our sensations go in any moment. We use the breath as an anchor, noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. If it helps you to stay focused, just silently say to yourself, Breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out with the out-breath. But just staying focused on the very present moment and the process of breathing, this miraculous process of life that occurs every moment of our lives. And when the mind wanders, which it inevitably will, just take note of where it went. Just notice, be aware. Try not to judge, just observe. And then gently. and I'll bring us out of the meditation at the end of 10 minutes.
And so we gently bring our awareness back into the room, back into our setting, wherever we are right now. Let's just take a nice deep breath together, breathing in, breathing out. And when you're comfortable, go ahead and open your eyes as we now move into our Wednesday evening service and our opening chant. God is in this place. So once again, welcome to all of you who have joined us this evening via Facebook Live and Zoom. Um, I understand the earth shook a little bit a little bit while ago. Uh, I didn't feel it. I was right here. I didn't feel it. But um, to those of you who did, I know it can be unsettling. So let's just take this moment to turn within and know the truth. So right here, right now, let us turn our attention inward and feel that part of us that every moment seeks to experience joy, wholeness, safety, fulfillment, well-being in every way possible. And to recognize that as the impulse that is felt throughout creation, is the, it is the impulse of the one life, the one power that we call God that infinite goodness that is forever impelling itself into creation, that one goodness that lies at the center of everything and everyone, including each and every one of us gathered for this service this evening, whether we are here or remotely participating virtually, I know we are all interconnected in this life of God. And I'm so grateful for all the ways that God's nature unfolds throughout our time together. I know that it is God's love that we feel that allows us to feel connected even though we are not physically in the same place. It is that vibration of God's love that shows up as all those who are of service this evening it is the beauty and inspiration of God that moves through our musician Sam and our soloist Dean this evening. I know that together the music that they make and that we share in uplifts us and inspires us. I open myself to being a vessel through which the divine speaks and delivers the message that we all have come to hear and know and accept at some deeper level to have a greater realization of our divine nature. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now, 
for the healing and the revealing that occurs during this time. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Life can be a challenge. Life can seem impossible. It's never easy when so much is on the line. But you can make a difference. With courage you can make things right. The gift to dream and make dreams real is yours and mine. The power of one begins with believing. It starts in the heart and flows through the soul and changes the world. Imagine how life will be when we stand in unity. Each of us holds the key to the power of one. Each of us is chosen. There's a mission just for you. Just look inside, you'll be surprised what you can do. The power of one begins with believing. It starts in the heart and flows through the soul and changes the world. Imagine how life will be when we're standing in unity. Each of us holds the key to the power of one, and one by one, we can make the world brighter, the power of one. It starts in the heart and flows through the soul and changes the world. Imagine how life will be when we stand in unity. Each of us holds the key. It's inside of you and me. Each of us holds the key. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that what we need to hear today? Boy, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dean. I think no one would argue with me if I were to say that we are experiencing some pretty major challenges in our country and in our world right now. Um, a worldwide pandemic and then here on the national level, what's been happening 
um, you know, uh, all of the protests and everything from something we can't even believe happened, uh, as Dr. Mark talked about, you know, this whole um, situation that once again we're looking at this issue of racism that we would so love to know we've healed. And you know, in Science of Mind, we emphasize that no matter what is going on out there, God is present in everything, in everyone, in all life conditions. And that can be confusing, you know, because we're saying God and God is pure goodness is at the center of everything. And yet, not everything we see happening in the world, obviously, looks or feels good. And I think it's important for us to realize that we, we don't mean that we shouldn't look at the situations in the uh, conditions of the world where God's nature does not seem to be fully expressed. We're, we're not there to deny the negative circumstances in the world. I think our teaching is often misinterpreted as one where we're just supposed to put this rubber stamp of it's all good and this smiley face on everything and deny the pain and the suffering. And it's not about that at all. I mean, we absolutely acknowledge the human experience of pain and suffering, but we believe it serves to point us to identify and heal the underlying cause of the suffering. The other morning, as we were wrapping up our morning meditation, uh, we do uh, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., there was a little bit of discussion of, you know, everything that's been going on in our country. And, you know, I made the point that uh, when we have a wound on our body, the wound is there to get our attention as to what needs to be done to heal it. And I think we need to look at the negative conditions, the horrible situations that we sometimes face as wounds that are there to get our attention, to find a way to heal and to come back to a place of goodness and well-being, which is our core nature. The pain and turmoil that we experience from discordant conditions in the world are wounds that get our attention so we can heal them. And the underlying cause is always some version of a way that we're failing to see our oneness with God, our oneness with all creation. All suffering we teach in this teaching arises from a sense of duality, of me versus you, of me versus the world, of us versus them, that there's God and there's something else. You know, God's nature lies at the center of everything, and we all feel it as an impulse to experience goodness because God's nature is goodness. So we always have this feeling that we want to feel good. We want to feel like life is going the way we want it to go. And that's felt everywhere, and God's impulse is for all of us to experience goodness. But because part of our core nature is free will, we've been left with the freedom to discover that nature of God for ourselves, and that allows us to feel separate. And out of that sense of separateness comes the perception or the beliefs, the behaviors that show up as my good versus your good me versus you, me versus God, or good. And that's what creates the negative circumstances in the world. But again, we go back to no matter how discordant, how horrible things may appear to us, God's nature lies at the center of those situations to be revealed. So on the one hand, because if we're looking at life from all sides, which is a title of my talk, on the one hand, we don't deny the negative. We don't deny the pain and the suffering, the discordant conditions. But we also don't want to deny the greater potential of God's goodness 
that's ever present. We don't want to get caught up in what I would label as one-way thinking where we only see one side. Maybe we only focus on the horrible and thereby deny the side of the good to be revealed. You know, many people think our teaching denies the presence of evil. And we don't. We absolutely don't deny. Just pick up the paper, watch the news. I mean, have we not seen you know, evil acts that triggered all of um, you know, the discordant conditions, the protests, and you know, that it's led to violence and other things? There is definitely evil in the world, but we deny that evil is a power in and of itself. You know, we see evil as a byproduct of us not sensing our oneness with God. So ideally, when we can look at conditions or behaviors as bad, as negative, as evil, but realize that they are the byproduct of error thinking, of some false belief of being separate from God, we can look at the situation from different sides in terms of seeing the negative aspect, but also seeing the possibility for that to change, and then looking at what needs to happen for it to change. We can look at you know, what could cause someone to behave so hatefully toward another. What mindset is behind that? Try to understand it and then say, and how can that be changed? What can we do to change that? Because there is a potential for that to be changed. There is a potential in those who commit evil acts to change, to not have to commit those acts to feel their sense of power or whatever it is that they felt disconnected from. You know, when, when we get into, locked into one-way thinking, focusing on the horrible, all we experience is horrible. And when we're in that place of just being overcome by how horrible it all is, we don't bring constructive energy to the situation. We don't bring healing energy to that which needs to be healed. I think also the ability to look at things from different sides, to look at life from all sides, is that it allows us to look at opinions, points of view that are completely opposite to our own, and to try to understand the rationale behind them, even if we don't agree, and see if maybe there's a middle ground. I think Dr. Mark so beautifully addressed the idea that, you know, We've been struggling around this issue of the pandemic in our country between you know, the idea of our civil liberties and freedoms and you know, wanting to not have to give those up and also looking at but what's for the greater good of all. And that sometimes the greater good means giving up certain liberties and freedoms. Well, being able to look at both, I mean, there's a, a merit to both of these sides, uh, if we look at that and say, so how can we do what's for the greater good of all, but also honor this desire for a sense of freedom or for those who are saying, look, you know, these restrictions are really, really hurting me. When we're willing to consider that there are two points of view and that each one has merit, we then open up to all the different possibilities of how we might be able to bring forth a little bit more of this while also honoring this. You know, and in situations like where we're facing darkness, conditions such as racism, hate, violence, anger, if we can look at those situations and see them as opportunities for light to be shed on them and to know that there is a possibility for light to be shed on them, then we become vessels 
to bring forth that light. You know, when I, when I think of these situations where things that are so tragic have happened and how do we heal out of that, I go back, I know I've shared many times the story of a dear friend of mine who was an employee of mine for a while, Charlotte Austin Jordan, who lost, at the time she was working for me, she had lost one child, her 13-year-old girl, to gang violence. She later lost another child to that, to uh, violence as well. And of course, Charlotte went through her grief, her rage, you know, her sense of, you know, this is insane. But there was something in her that always felt the potential for things to change, for things to improve. And particularly, she had this incredible innate sense of, in those people who are perpetrating these crimes, there is a potential for good. There's just something that has gotten twisted, that they've lost their way, but there's a way for them to change. And that motivated her to start going down to prisons and speaking to some of these people who had committed these horrific crimes and tr to try to get through to them. It prompted her to start an organization, Save Our Future USA, to help kids who were coming out of prison to not fall back into their old patterns. But at the same time, while she was seeing the potential in those who commit these crimes to, to change and to change for the good, she also acknowledged uh, you know, how destructive and the kind of destruction that these acts did on the victims of the crimes and their families. And so she also worked on their behalf. And I remember one particular situation that she told me about where there was a young man that she was visiting in prison who had killed a young girl. And so she, she certainly could relate to the grief of the parents, but was still very much focused on the other side of, and this kid can change. And over time, she did get through to him. And he expressed incredible remorse for what he did. He had an epiphany. He had the sense of what he did was so wrong and that he would want to be able to make amends. And it was a big breakthrough, obviously. But I remember he, he mentioned to her that now that he had recognized the error of his ways, he felt he should be released so he could get out and you know, live a productive life. And I remember that with great compassion, the way she described the conversation to me, she told him, no, honey, no, you're not ready to go out there. And she explained several things. She said, first of all, I know you've understood, you've seen the error of your ways, but she said, change can take time, and you get back in the world, and you don't know that you might not be pulled in to an old way of being. You know, it takes a while to really, really change from within. And she also said, what you did was absolutely horrible. You not only ended this girl's life, you destroyed her family's life. Can you imagine how they'd feel if you were released after just a few years? And she said, you can help that family to heal by feeling remorse, by expressing your remorse, but also say that you're willing to face the consequence and be here. And she said, now what I think you can do is while you're here, let's look at things that you can do while you're in prison that could be a blessing to people here that you might, from prison, to do while they were in that kind of confinement. 
And I thought there was, there was just a brilliance to it because Charlotte was able the goodness in this individual, but at the same time recognize the pain and suffering of those that he had hurt and to say, you know, we need to look at what is the best way to bring forth healing. But all of it was with a focus of bringing forth some greater good. So again, it goes back to us being able to recognize where things are out of alignment in the realm of conditions here in, you know, humanville, but to not lose sight of the truth, the perspective that there's always some greater good to be revealed from negative circumstances, even the most horrible ones. You know, we can already see evidence of it in that I don't know of any situation in the past, maybe it's just that I'm not informed, but I haven't heard of situations where they're the kinds of protests that we're hearing about where the police have, in the midst of the conflict, you know, joined the protesters. We have in several cities where the police have joined the protesters in kneeling with them, in marching with them, in saying, I know that you know we're here to you know, maintain the law and all of that and keep things in order. But let's all recognize we're here to bring forth a greater good. So we are seeing how goodness, love, compassion, respect is being birthed out of a situation that was so horrible. Our job is not to deny the human inequities and problems. Our job it is incumbent upon us to keep affirming God's potential in us all that's greater than any of the circumstances that we're facing. That potential that can absolutely show us the way into the healing of physical and emotional, all kinds of wounds. We want to look at what's happening and we want to look at the greater potential to be revealed. And one way for us to do that is, and I invite us, if we were to pick one quality of God right now that we just feel, if we could call that forth, that would bring forth so much healing Whatever that is to us, greater love, respect, kindness, compassion, wholeness, whatever. And look at ways that in the midst of everything that's going on, we can continue to express it. How can I be a presence of love? How can I be a presence of peace? How can I be a presence of comfort today? Pick one and just keep focusing on ways that we can express that quality of God. That aligns us with and reminds us of that potential that's within us. And when we can sense it within us, we can have a greater sense of it being in others as well. And that's how we keep calling it forth so that we can see the healing. We can see things from the side of this needs to be healed and it's possible, absolutely possible to heal it. So let's turn our attention inward. And I invite you to call to mind a situation that's going on in your life or in the world. I know there are many right now that's causing you distress. And just, I know there, there are many different things going on, but just choose one. Let's focus on one. And ask yourself, what quality of God would you want to see revealed so this situation
in kindness. What predominant quality of God do you feel is needed for this situation to be transformed, to be healed? And notice that as you contemplate this, you can feel the essence of that quality in you. That's because it lies within you. It's God's nature in you. It's within all beings. It's within all creation. And you're feeling its impulse for greater revelation of itself. So I invite you to take a moment to commit to finding ways to call forth this quality into your daily life in any ways that you can. And from this place, feel this vibration within you and allow yourself to affirm its presence in all beings, no matter how much they may not be expressing it right now. Just affirm that it is there to be revealed. Affirm that this quality is present in the situation you've called to mind. And it is being called forth, it is revealing itself. Know that as you set this intention, because we're all interconnected on the unseen side of life, you are opening the avenues for the healing to come forth. And so I invite you to set your intention to be open to seeing things both from the human perspective, but to also never lose sight of God's infinite potential. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace seeing things from different viewpoints that allow you to see the pathways to greater good, that potential that lies in all situations. And so it's from this place feeling that vibration of that greater potential that is always there to be revealed. I invite you to join me in knowing the truth for the various challenges that we tend to face in our human experience. Knowing that that one life, that one power, that one presence that is God fills and surrounds all creation let us absolutely know that this one is present in each of us, in all beings, in all situations, everywhere. And so where there is any suffering around the changes that occur in this human dimension, let us know the truth that indeed on the human plane, everything is undergoing change. And yet the nature of God, out of which everything is created, never changes. So let us know for those who are feeling a sense of grief or loss around a change that's occurred, that that essence of God's nature that was present in the experience they had before is ever present to be known in some new way, that even when the change involves leaving this human plane, that those who leave us move into a next dimension of life, continue to live on, and we continue to remain connected to them. And there's some new way to experience and express that love. Let us know together in this moment that where there are conditions of physical and mental health challenges that anyone that is suffering from any form of dis-ease, certainly those who are touched by this virus, this pandemic, and the other human ailments that so many can experience, let's absolutely know that there lies beneath that a pattern of God's wholeness, health, well-being, 
that as we align with it, it is the healing power that can transmute anything from dis-ease into well-being, into health, into vitality. And so we claim its presence as bringing forth the healing and the pathways into healing, the cures, the vaccines, the different modalities of healing that bring us back into a state of homeostasis. Let us know together that where individuals are feeling disconnected from a sense of fulfillment, of being in a place where they can give of their talents and receive back that sense of being valued and appreciated, that each of us, each of us has so many unique gifts to share, and that we honor the impulse of God to give of itself unto itself through us. And as we do, we are moved into those perfect right situations where our unique gifts and talents are needed, are valued, that we feel the fulfillment of sharing that God nature with others in our unique ways. Let us know that where there's any sense of lack and limitation, that we are dealing with an infinite, infinite presence that knows nothing of lack, that God is limitless. And as we open to that infinite giver-receiver vibration at the center of all things, that there's a revelation of greater prosperity and ability to give generously and to absolutely take in and feel supported, absolutely plentiful, whether it be in our capacity to give and receive love, to be creative and share and celebrate the creativity around us in the area of finances, that we know that God is the infinite source, is there to give of itself and that we can take it in and give back generously. And I absolutely know that the core nature of this one is love. So let us know where there are any situations as we, as we have witnessed of discord, of bigotry, of hatred, that love is the greater power. And as we align with that vibration of love, it moves us into a greater relationship of love with ourselves and all beings everywhere because all beings reflect back the nature of God that lives and moves in each and every one of us. And so we see a healing of those relationships where there is discord. And knowing that that impulse of love is for greater good, let us set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, whether it's for greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us know that we're feeling the impulse of that one infinite power for greater realization of its goodness in all parts of creation. And so as we know that God is present in all of these situations, good comes forth, healing occurs. That is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. 
Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. You should be seeing a link right now that allows you to connect to our donation page. If for some reason it's not showing up or you're having trouble getting to it, it's uh, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page. And, um, you know, if you're unable to give in that way but would like to send in a check, of course, you can still do that. Or you can call us after the service at the church number, 818-762-7566. And we'll have someone here to answer your calls. It'll be Terry this evening who can take your call and take your donation by credit card or debit card over the phone. Thank you, thank you for your support. Let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always For the arms of God surround us Let our joy be so triumphant That we rest in God and say amen So <clears throat> as we bring our service to a close, uh, while we can't come out there and collect all your prayer requests like we would normally when we were here in the sanctuary, uh, please know that you can send in your prayer requests via email to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call into the church office and select the option for the Ministry of Prayer where you can leave a uh, prayer request by voicemail, and we have practitioners who check the voicemail and the email address every evening, gather those prayer requests, and send them out to all our practitioners, so you'll be supported by over 60 people in prayer, so please take advantage of that. Also, we like to remind you that if during the week you just want to hear words of truth, an inspirational 
reading and a prayer that's been pre-recorded by a practitioner. You can also call the church office for that, and that's uh, dial a prayer. So those are ways that you can continue to be supported uh, in prayer by us. Also, uh, as we've been doing after our services, when the service is over here, we'll be having uh, a reception line and time on the patio on Zoom meet and greet, but we'll also be able to connect you with a practitioner for a one minute miracle. If, you, if you're currently on Facebook Live, just switch over to uh, being with us on Zoom and so you can have a prayer with a practitioner after the service. I um, want to say thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. Uh, let's start, start out there in remote land to Melissa for uh, support on Facebook Live and to Mark and Barbara who are uh, supporting us on Zoom and I know Terry and um, Brenda are also shadowing and watching that process. So we've got all that support. Thank you to Alex and Blair who are in here to make sure all the technology is working. To Adam at the back there for making sure we are seen and heard. Thank you so much to our awesome musical support this evening. Thank you to Sam and to Dean for, that was just so perfect tonight. And by the way, if you would like to be inspired by Dean, and uh, you can go to his website, deanregan.com, and uh, he has his CD available there, right? Um, also want to acknowledge uh, Dan Rose, practitioner Dan Rose, whose CD, uh, The Art of the Drone, we use for our meditation music. I love it because we have a 10-minute meditation, and all the tracks on Dan's CD are 10 minutes. Exactly. So um, if you're interested in that, you can go to his website, dan-rose.com. A uh, few announcements. We have, uh, oh, I didn't, pardon me, I didn't thank uh, Gail Pallott, who's holding vigil for us this evening, and Christine Crawford as well. And they and other practitioners will be available to uh, pray with you after service. So thank you. Um, so next Wednesday, uh, my topic will be spiritual bypass, question mark. Hmm. Wouldn't we love to do a few of those? Uh, we invite you to stay informed and up to, ba up to date <laughs> through our website and weekly blasts and newsletters. Uh, website is nhcrs.org. If you haven't signed up to receive the eBlast, uh, we invite you to do that so you can be proactively notified of things that are going on here. Uh, Self-mastery class via Zoom will begin next Tuesday, June 9th. I'll be teaching that. It's an uh, amazing eight-week class. It emphasizes personal growth and understanding. Students are encouraged to release the past while learning the art of living the science of mind. This class is open to all. It's a prerequisite for practitioner training if you're interested in being on that track. Uh, tuition is 200 if paid in full, 220 uh, if paid in two installments. And you can sign up online or call into the church office to do that. I love this class. Um, I hope you'll be able to join us for it. Uh, reminder that you can go to the website to find out uh, how to join for the youth church, uh, ages five through 12, through 11, pardon me, meet via Zoom every Saturday. Teen Church, ages 12 through 19, meet via Zoom, Sundays at 9.45 and Wednesdays at 7.30. The men's group meets every Sunday on Zoom at 11, uh, from 11 to 11.30 a.m. We have our Zoom meditation that's uh, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. And uh, this coming Sunday, the women's group will be meeting via Zoom that will be led by practitioner Jean Laporte, that's at 1 p.m. So all of that information and how to get to those different links are on our website, or you can call in to the church office to get more information. Um, a reminder that we'll be here for about 30 minutes, so till about 10 or quarter after 8 to uh, take your 
uh, donations over the phone if you uh, wish to donate in that way. And once again, just want to say thank you for all the ways that you continue to support us. Thank you for being with us this evening. Let's turn our attention inward one more time. And so how grateful I am once again for all the ways that we have felt and come into alignment with that one power, that one presence of God that is all good. I'm so grateful for the ways it's revealed itself as a sense of loving connection, for the ways we've been touched and uplifted by it through Sam and Dean this, this evening. I absolutely know that we have felt it and been moved by it through the words, the silence, the prayers, through all of it. And I know that as we've come to look at life, this idea of life from all sides, that we leave with that greater sense of being willing to look at not only the human, but the presence of spirit behind it all, to be open to so many more perspectives that allow for a greater experience of God's goodness in our lives. I know that that continues to bless us as we go forward. It ripples out into the world. And so I give thanks for the blessings we've received this evening and how they multiply in our lives going forward. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. Thank you again for being with us. Let's join in song one more time. Good night, everyone.